And the Pentagon moments ago being asked about new satellite images reportedly showing mock-ups of U.S. warships created by the Chinese military for target practice. Here's Press Secretary John Kirby just moments ago. Watch. You've heard the secretary talk about this many times. He holds uh, the PRC as our number one pacing challenge. And what we're focused on, I, mean, they, they, I haven't seen uh, these images, and then they can speak to what, uh, what their bombing runs look like. That's for them to speak to. What I can tell you is we're focused on developing the capabilities, the operational concepts, making sure we have the resources and the right strategy in place so that we can deal with the PRC as the number one pacing challenge. Hmm. All right. So here now, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Good to see you, sir, as always. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for having me on today. So these images of uh, U.S. Uh, aircraft carriers, warships that are being used as target practice for the Chinese, they're uncomfortable and kind of stunning to look at. But are they unusual? No, they're not terribly unusual. We've seen other nations do this before as well. Yeah. But it is always unique when it is a, a real threat of the scale and size and magnitude that the Chinese Communist Party presents. It is different in kind. It is different in scale. And the risk, Martha, is fundamentally different as well. Look, some of this may well just be propaganda. You could shoot at a square that's roughly the same size as an American vessel. Um, but doing it in this way is good theater, maybe internally, but also externally, to send a message to the world that the Chinese Communist Party is serious. I, I, I heard the Pentagon speak. I hope they're right. I've seen no indication that they are prepared to confront the Chinese Communist Party on these issues. Martha, you'll remember, we saw our team pushed around in Anchorage. Uh, we've watched the Chinese ignore what the administration says is their top priority on climate change. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party is intent on conducting uh, cyber attacks across the world, coercing countries around the world. We need to take this threat seriously and platitudes from the Pentagon about this simply aren't going to get it done and aren't going to convince Xi Jinping, the leader in China, to behave differently. Yeah, I, I mean, even with this kind of language that, uh, that we heard from the president on Tuesday in Glasgow, um, we hear from the Chinese government and leadership, the foreign minister, that, you know, we're too blustery, we're too aggressive in our language. But here's President Biden on Tuesday. Watch. Am I worried about an armed conflict or some that accidentally occurring with China? No, I'm not. We're not going to change our attitude toward constitution, international airspace, international sea lanes, etc. I'm not looking for, I don't anticipate, there will be a need for, uh, to be, there be physical conflict. What do you think about that answer, sir? Uh, I'm guessing that Xi Jinping, who matters more than what I think, I think Xi Jinping hears that and hears American weakness in America that talks about pacing items, I think I heard Kirby say, or mm -hmm. these are strategic competitors. This, this is an adversary. Xi Jinping talks about this constantly, about the Middle Kingdom, about the China dream, that what he's doing with respect to Taiwan has challenged American ways and, and that we have not seen them challenge the people of Taiwan before. Deterrence matters, Martha. The way you avoid the very conflict that President Biden spoke of is to demonstrate resolve and capacity. We need to do that not just ourselves, but with our partners in Australia and Japan and South Korea and India, uh, the Europeans as well. When we do those things well, when we establish real deterrence and they know that an administration is serious about protecting its interest, this is how you avoid conflict, not just with the Chinese Communist Party, but with the Iranians and others as well. Yeah, I know there's a lot of concern that post-Olympics in Beijing, uh, it might be a time when we could see China potentially attack or become more aggressive against um, against Taiwan. Do you think that that is a time frame that we should be worried about? And what can we do in the meantime to try to project strength that would prevent them from doing that? Martha, I do think that's concerning. He'll be at his pinnacle. He'll, he'll stand on that stage at the Olympics in Beijing with Americans at his feet. He'll look down on the American athletes and lord over them. Uh, he'll then see that he is uh, in a place where the world has recognized his greatness, and I think his own people will sense that too. So I am very concerned about that. There are so many things we could do. It could start with exerting American economic pressure on the Chinese Communist Party in the way that we did in the Trump administration. The tools are available. We simply need leaders that are prepared to actually do this. There's always some risk associated with that. 
But if you get this wrong, if Xi Jinping determines that he can continue to twist the knife and continue to push America, I can assure you he most certainly will. And that presents the real risk of conflict. Well, they uh, have been building at least three new solid fueled ICBM silo fields that could contain hundreds of new ICBM silos. We know that they are aggressively building their military capabilities and we have to be clear eyed about it. Uh, thank you very much, Secretary Pompeo. Always good to see you. Yes, ma'am. Great to see you, too, Martha. You bet.